Elsewhere, we have examined the gradient of the curl of a vector field and the divergence of the gradient of a scalar field. We were able to show that both of these quantities are always zero. The one obvious remaining combination involving two of the del operators is the curl of the curl. Something like del cross del and of course here we need a vector field because it's a cross product. I mentioned elsewhere that this was quite a challenge. It is certainly not equal to the zero vector. So the question arises as to how we could simplify it. It is a little bit messy so you'll have to bear with me if the algebra gets a bit complicated. Let's start with the right hand part of the expression, the curl of V. I'm going to just write this one down because it's just a determinant with d by dx, d by dy, d by dz as usual and we'll assume the usual components v1, v2, v3 and without going into all the details the answer we get is the following. I've been a bit cavalier about writing this down quickly because I think if you've got this far with the maths casts you're probably quite familiar with this sort of expression already. We now need to take this new vector and put it into a curl again. This is going to become unpleasant. Here's the determinant expression. There are the usual first and second rows but in the third row we have to put the components of this rather unpleasant looking vector that's just above. I'll put it in here immediately. I've put some red parentheses around the individual components along the bottom row to make clear that they're distinguished from each other and of course not multiplied together. I've also done something that you might at first sight find a bit confusing and that is in the second component which looking above has a minus in front of it minus dv3 by dx minus dv1 by dz I've taken that negative inside and swapped the order so I've got positive dv1 by dz minus dv3 by dx. That just makes for a little bit of extra room in the determinant as it's rather long and complicated. Now we have to do the differentiations again. As usual there will be i, j and k parts. For the i part we need to differentiate the third component on the bottom with respect to y. It's going to be d2 v2 by dy dx minus d2 v1 by dy squared and then we have to subtract and differentiate the second component on the bottom with respect to z. So that's minus d2 v1 by dz d in fact is z squared and because we're subtracting and there's a minus in the middle of the bracket on the bottom it'll become plus d2 v3 by dz dx. To save time I'm now just going to fill in the others. They work in the same way and if you want you can check them on paper. Here's the end result so far. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this expression is not easy to simplify and is intractable. But there is a trick we can use to see how the whole thing simplifies to a much nicer expression. Rather than try and deal with it all at once, I'm going to look at just the I component what happens to the i component will suggest to us also what must happen to the j and k parts and then we'll be able to identify the structure. Okay, so let's forget the second and third terms for the moment and look at the coefficient of i. It is. Just copy it out for the minute. d2 v2 by dy dx plus d2v3 by 
dz dx minus d2v1 by dy squared minus d2v1 by dz squared. I've written the terms in a different order for a reason. That's because I want to focus on some of them. Look at the last two. These two here. They both involve v1. At least they would if I'd actually written the 1 on in the first place. That's the second y derivative and the second z derivative. That's almost the Laplacian of v1, isn't it? To be the Laplacian of v1, we would need minus d2v1 by dx squared. Let's put it in and take it out again and see if that gets us anywhere. So there, I've subtracted the term that I'd like to see. And of course now I've written something that's not true, so I'd better remove it again by adding it back in. Now let's group the terms differently. Let's take these three together, and let's take these three together. We'll do the ones in the middle first. That's, well, everything's acting on v1 there. And it's d2 by dx squared, d2 by dy squared, and d2 by dz squared. That's minus grad squared v1. That's the three terms in the middle. These three. Now as for the other terms, well they're mixed up aren't they? v1, v2 and v3. But the one thing they do all have in common is that they've got a d by dx acting on them. So that's plus d by dx on, and now let's just read them off. The first one is dv2 by dy. The next one is dv3 by dz. And the last one that's here, it's got two x derivatives, so we need a dv1 by dx. Now that's interesting, because what's in the bracket there? I know it's in the wrong order, but it's just the divergence of v. So that's minus grad squared v1 plus d by dx of div v. That's as far as we can get, but it's told us a great deal. Remember, this was the first component. It was the i part. The first component has v1 here and it has the first derivative of the divergence. Maybe you won't be too surprised if I tell you that the j part can be analyzed the same way. And because this is the second component, we get minus the Laplacian, this time acting on the second component of v. And then, because it's the second component, we get not d by dx, but d by dy on div v. And then finally, the k part. No prizes for this one. Minus the Laplacian on v3 plus d by dz on div v. Let's put it all together. The curl of the curl of v is minus grad squared v1 i minus grad squared v2 j minus grad squared v3 k. That has dealt with this term and this one and this one. And then what's left? Well, plus d by dx of div v. And this was, remember, the i component. And then the j component contributed a d by dy of div v. And finally, the k component 
contributed a d by dz, this one here, of div v. So now if we stare at that expression, what have we actually got? Well, with the grad squared, it's acting on v1i plus v2j plus v3k. And the remaining three terms are, well, they've all got the divergence of v in, and they are of the form i d by dx plus j d by dy plus k d by dz. But watch that, it's just the del operator acting on div v. Finally, the thing in the brackets here is nothing other than the vector v. So we end up with the gradient of div v minus grad squared v. And that's our final result. The curl of the curl of v. And by the way, notice that it's important to put that right-hand part in brackets to distinguish it from being the grad cross grad cross v, which would be zero. And our answer is the vector given by the gradient of the divergence of v minus the Laplacian acting on v. That's a very important result, believe it or not. And it's used, for example, in electromagnetic theory and fluid mechanics. In a future maths cast, I'll try and show you a very slick way of getting this result using something known as the anti-symmetric epsilon tensor. But to understand that, you'll need to be pretty smart and it will take two or three maths casts to get there. But if you feel that you might be interested in this, then it's actually a fascinating process.